Uh, and then the kung free leaf, again, very high protein. And then red clover, high protein, but now you've got some tannins, so that's blocking bacterial action. There. And then the linden, because it has hardly any protein, it will last the longest. I bumped it, but nothing happened. Do you buy your herbs, or do you... Oh, yes, I must buy my herbs. Mm -hmm. Just to make enough infusion for one person, Mm. is 25 pounds of herb a year. Mm -hmm. Do you have a source that you want to share? Frontier Herbal Co-op is the best. Mm -hmm. uh, on many, many different levels. Well, first of all, it is a co-op. So you're actually becoming a member of the co-op when you buy from them. It just allows them to keep their prices really reasonable. Mm -hmm. The reason, however, that I got this thing with the camera is because I wanted to talk to you about the watermelon soup. Do you see why you still had some around to look at? Watermelon soup, yeah. Do you see how, how red the broth is? Mm -hmm. This watermelon soup? So the redness of that broth is telling you that they're carotenes and carotenoids that are out of the plant matrix and dissolved into the liquid so that you can get them so that you can uptake them. And that's because technically this isn't raw watermelon. The main carotenoids that we think gives that red color carotene, of course beta carotene, but also zeanthinin, such a next zeanthinin. And zeanthinin is very strongly implicated in keeping your eyes healthy, preventing macular degeneration, a wide variety of, of the eye problems. And interestingly enough, of course, so are goji berries, which are loaded with zeanthinin, right? So, yeah, we're on a roll with this. So there's a researcher, and he says, all right, watermelon has lots of zeanthinin. How much do you have to eat? Are we talking like a normal watermelon portion size watermelon that you can get some zeanthinin or do you have to like you know if it's some of the things like oh this is loaded with calcium like if you eat two cups of dried basil you get this much calcium no one's eating two cups of dried basil <laughs> is this like doable or not so he had all these volunteers and he kept feeding them watermelon and he couldn't find any of this compound in their blood at all ever no matter how much he gave them and he was getting despondent And then he had a dream, which is we do all live charmed lives. And in his dream, he was eating frozen watermelon. And the volunteers were eating frozen watermelon. They were in this white, snowy, frozen landscape. So he takes the watermelon, puts it in the freezer, <laughs> gives it to the volunteers, measures their blood. Wham! It's loaded with zeanthinin. There are five ways cook your food. Nothing on this planet eats raw food. We can heat our food for sufficient time until the cell walls are broken, and we can perceive that because there is a marked color change and a marked texture change. If you're steaming your vegetables and keeping them bright green, that means the cell walls are intact and you get no nutrition. You have to cook until you get texture and color change in order to get nutrition from the plant. You can freeze. It's quite common throughout North America that native people wouldn't pick berries until the first frost, after the first frost. Because they knew that they would get more from them. Or you can dry them. The early white people writing about native people picking berries comment ceaselessly about the fact they don't eat any, any of them. Why would you waste your berry by eating it raw. You get nothing from it. They harvest them, they dry them, they pound them with meat, they make pemmican. Now you're starting to be able to get some nutrition from your berry. We can use sufficient heat for sufficient time. We can freeze, we can dehydrate, we can ferment. Fermentation not only breaks the cell wall and cooks the food, it increases the vitamin content. Right? There's 12 times more vitamin C in sauerkraut than in cabbage. 15 times more B vitamins in beer than in barley. 
Wow, fermentation. And we can marinate. Yeah. We can cover in oil to be specific because vinegar doesn't count. How can we tell vinegar doesn't count? Well, who has a garment with a vinegar stain on it? Mm. No hands. Mm -hmm. Who has a garment with an oil stain on it? Mm. Many hands, because oil cooks the fibers of the garment, becomes part of it, and you can't get it out, but vinegar doesn't. Yeah, we can put protein in vinegar, and the texture of the protein will change. We can make servings. We can put fish in vinegar, or lemon juice, and it'll look like it's good, but that's not, that doesn't really count. And in a restaurant that serves that, it has to be served as raw fish. It can't be claimed to be good. But marinating in oil does cook. We can see it right here in our water bottles. <laughs> Thank you.